Because we're recording. Good evening and welcome to the December 21st Board of Directors meeting. We'll start a meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And we will begin with our public input statement read by our vice chair. The first public input session is a 21 minute session with each person having no longer than three minutes in which to make a statement. But a second public input session may be held at the end of the meeting if allowed by the board chair. Each speaker will give his or her name, address and reason for speaking. Public input is designated for district residents, but the board chair may grant non-residents the opportunity to address the board. Statements concerning subject matter that falls under the law regarding executive sessions, for example, matters involving personnel, cannot be made during public input. We as a community pledge to treat each other as we wish to be treated, we pledge to seek understanding when there may be disagreement, regardless of outcomes or opinions, we ple pledge to move forward with respect. This is a time for comments and or questions for the board, but please be aware that questions may not be able to be answered at this meeting. Thank you. Uh, public input. Mm -hmm. okay. No. Talk loud, Holly. All right, I'll try. Speak. So, how many free passes does the universe have to give us before something really bad happens? And we're all looking at each other, saying, "I never thought anything like this would happen in our town." We hear it every single time that there was a mass shooting. Please do not let that be us. We actually have an opportunity to take advantage of funding to get an RO position at Lebanon Elementary School. I understand the majority of you support the RO and acknowledge that you would figure out how to make it work in your budget. I get it. You have a budget you need to maintain. You can put price tags on technology, HVAC systems, and even administration positions. But I heard two school board members on the 7th putting a price tag on human lives one of whom actually said out loud that she did not think it was necessary to hire an RO for the Lebanon Elementary School because the people of Lebanon are heavily armed and have scanners and would start a phone tree calling to arms a homegrown militia to respond to an emergency at the school. I could not believe my ears. I'm honestly shocked it was said out loud, but I'm glad it was because everyone can go back to the tapes to hear what was said. I would argue that this school board member's reasoning as to why she thinks we do not need an RO in Lebanon might be the very reason why we do. As she admitted, Lebanon is heavily armed. And even the sheriff department explained at the seventh school board meeting how Lebanon's call volume is very high in Lebanon. But I would also like to ask, what can the community do with your help, of course, to get metal detectors installed at Noble High School? You often hear the argument that metal detectors wouldn't work or make much difference if someone was set on doing something bad. However, metal detectors could have helped in this month's near miss at Noble, Middle, at Noble High School. They would have most likely detected a gun in that student's backpack at the beginning of the day and not at dismissal. It's something. We not only detect weapons, but also send a message to everyone who enters our school. We want to keep our children safe and our school board cares. My children have come home on many occasions telling me about the lockdown drills our schools have, nonchalantly explaining what they would do and where they would hide if something occurred at their school. I get physically nauseous and choke back tears when I listen to my children normalize it. But that is the world we live in now, isn't it? School shootings and lockdown drills have become normalized in a sense, whether we like it or not. They would normalize metal detectors as well, and it could be one added step in our line of defense. 
please email me and let us know what we as parents and community members can do to get metal detectors installed at Noble High School. And please call the guest for a resource officer at Lebanon for 2020. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Well done. <laughs> We have other public input. Uh, good evening. Mark Pillar from Noble Borough. I don't have any children, but um, recently uh, my nephew attends SAT 60. He was expelled because he didn't have his immunization shots up to date. He's six years old. He's got autism. I think this is a right for the parents. Now, as far as um, the incident happened here, I understand that there was no threats made. And I also, things have changed. And what has changed? When I went to school, we brought our shotguns to school. We showed kids our guns before hunting season. And um, we never had shootings. We never thought about shootings. So what has changed? I really believe it's the education system has changed and it's failing and you guys all know it and here you are proud as educators and I think you need to look back at what you're teaching and the the uh, effect it's having on our children thank you other input Hi, um, I'm Desiree Labby and I teach in the Lebanon schools. Um, I'm speaking today in regards to statements made at the school board meeting on Thursday, December 7th. At this school board meeting, there was a discussion about providing an SRO for the Lebanon schools. In the past few years, MSAD 60 has been taking huge strides toward making our schools as safe as possible from violent critical incidents. This has been thanks in part to the ALICE program. At the December 7th school board meeting, Heather LaFrance spoke about the amount of time it takes police to reach our school during an emergency, upwards of 20 minutes. According to Alice, there have been over 250 active shooter incidents since the year 2000. Of all these active shooter incidents, 50% were over in five minutes or less. That means police are serving more in a reactionary role rather than responding to an active threat. Having an SRO present in the Lebanon schools is beneficial to both the students and staff for a couple of reasons. Having an SRO present in our buildings would help alleviate the responsibility placed on teachers during a violent critical incident. This would allow teachers to focus on keeping students out of harm's way during an incident. It would not only provide a sense of safety to our schools, it would also help to foster a positive relationship between police and the community, which would hopefully change the perspective and relationship community members have with police. There were concerning remarks made by a member of the school board in regards to the SRO discussion. The remarks were, and I quote, everyone around me I know is well armed and many of them listen to the scanners. They are listening to the scanners, they know what's going on. If there is something going on in Lebanon, an active shooter, we have tons of veterans. There would be people pulling out their guns and there would be call trees. It's not necessarily as isolated as you would think, end quote. These remarks were inappropriate and unprofessional. Inviting community members into our schools with weapons during a violent critical incident would be dangerous for the students, staff, and community members present. Armed community members showing up at schools will only cause confusion for police as to who the gunman is, resulting in a potentially dangerous situation for the armed community members. The safety of our students, staff, and community members in Lebanon should always be of utmost importance. Thank you for your time. My name is Amanda Turner, and I am here in North Berwick. I have three children who attend Mad MS 8060. I'm disgusted right now with the meeting that happened on the 7th. It's an embarrassment. You guys should be completely, utterly embarrassed of yourselves. It's disgusting. Lebanon is part of this district. Stop missing the community. 
Do we understand that? Because I'm not seeing that. My children are my everything. And when I send them to school, I expect them to be safe, not come home and tell me things that have gone on. They can't even use the friggin' bathroom in the high school. People are doing drugs. They're fighting. They're selling stuff. That's not okay. And then we have a, a freaking shooter accident incident here. What are you guys going to do to make it safe for these children? I'm embarrassed of Noble. I'm disgusted. And I'm ready to pull my kids from the school district. It's gross. Other input? Mark, I don't know if you all know me. Uh, a couple of statements. I made a statement at the last meeting. Mark, could you speak up a little, please? Well, I had asked last year for you all to get the microphones, and we didn't get them. Okay. I will speak up. Thank you. As long as you guys speak up, so we can hear you when you talk. Hmm. I served in the armed forces. I have never seen a gun levitate off my desk and start shooting. It's people that have mental problems or been bullied that shoot people. Gentlemen, there was no active shooter in the school. I want to correct that young lady. But I did say we need an SRO in Lebanon. A few people I talked to that are friends of mine disagree. I believe we need. There are funds up in Augusta. We need to approach some of our esteemed uh, senators. Go after them funds so we can get that. Also, I've been saying for a long time, and I haven't said it to you, but we do need metal detectors at the doors. What she said about what's going on in the bathrooms, I've heard it from other people. There are quite a few families that have pulled the kids out of the school system and are schooling them at home because of the things that are going on in the school. I think our system has failed us. Our mental health system has failed us. Now this young gentleman brought a stolen gun in his backpack to school. He needs to see a counselor and a counselor that's not going to help him change his life to anything else but a kid. Okay, he needs, he needs some mental help. He could have been bullied. Nobody knows. Nobody, the truth hasn't come out yet. But our mental health system has failed us. And we need counselors in the school that will provide mental health. If other public input? <laughs> No, we will move on to the minutes of December 7th. Correction, as we held it in Berwick. Oh, yeah, apologies. <sighs> yep, got it. Motion to approve. Second. I'll second. All in favor? Opposed? Abstention. Esteem. Gotcha. Financial summary. <clears throat> District feedback. Oh, I'm sorry. I skipped one. District feedback before legislative session. So we have Tiffany Roberts, who's here. Um, to, to has come in a few times right before the legislative session to kind of collect our feedback as you go into the active session. We also have Jeff Adams here as well. So Tiffany, why don't you start? Absolutely. And you need, yeah, thank you. 
Board, thank you. I'm Tiffany Roberts um, of South Berwick. I represent House District 149, which is parts of North and South Berwick. Um, seems like a little bit of a contentious air right now. Um, so we'll be and I are, are friends. We work together. So that's what I'd like to do here. And what I want to know from you guys is what you need. Um, I'm just going to go down a list. All the things that I've heard come up that may or may not be applicable to you. That came up through Marshwood and different districts that would need. So I'm wondering about staffing, um, the minimum salary, the ed tech increase. I've heard about vaping, wondering where we're at with that. Where you are with bus drivers, so as you can see there. Um, guidance counselors, are you lacking there? Are you using suites there? Are you doing main care billing? How can we help there? Safety, I heard there might be a need for some grants. Um, so there are bills out there for all of these, but I really would like to hear, as I have in the past, as um, Sue Austin can say, we've gone down a, a very long road of finally getting to just putting chronic absenteeism into statute that it's taken four years to become it, and now we can use it as an actionable item. It may seem little, but it can help move things forward. So I'm here to listen. Can't promise the moon and the stars, but I can promise I'm going to go back up there and work like I always do and try to get it done. But I need to know kind of what on these hot topics are there for you all, or did I miss something? And I'll write about that. I guess I forgot. So I think you're right. As far, you know, I think that list is representative of where we're at as well. Um, I I love the fact that there could be some safety, some additional safety grants. We've been hearing that uh, as being true. We, we're looking for them always. Um, that would be very helpful for us. Um, we do still have shortages of drivers. Um, the process is right now. We're just down two drivers, um, but we're also we've consolidated routes. So being down two drivers, we really are down more than that. Um, because we we needed to consolidate routes. Are you finding one of the draws to or the setbacks to recruiting new drivers is that they're not able to um, file for unemployment when the school year is over? That's not so much as the process to be to get licensed it takes a very long time. Um, we do have a, a nice robust summer program here, so we have a lot of drivers that are driving. Um, ed tech salaries is certainly a piece for us. We are down quite a few ed techs in all the different buildings. If, you, if, you, if I lined up 30 ed techs out in the hall, how many could you hire tomorrow if you get the funds? 10. And are you finding that during the pandemic, when teachers kind of retired early, that your ed techs all moved up? And we the teaching positions, and that, is that part of what, what's causing this? That's part of it, yes. I would say that the other piece of that is that um, there are more jobs available outside of education that are paying in a comparable or better way with a little less um, stress that comes with it. So the, if, if the, the, so the $50,000 is on the table from last session, it's carried over TBD that's going to get funded, we don't know. Where would that put you all, knowing that it would get wrapped into the funding formula i don't know what i know like partial with that 38 percent their minimum receiver i don't believe you guys are right. um, so would most of that get absorbed talk a little bit more about right. that like in yeah. terms of the fifty thousand, are you talking about minimum salary for teachers yeah so i don't know where you guys are at right now as far as that but so it's, oh, like, we're, it's yeah. kind of the backfill of that mm -hmm. that would need to occur so, so for teachers we're very close to that minimum okay. yeah, yeah. Southern Maine in general is probably closer to them, to that, you know. Around safety and grants, if we can do it. So the vaping, we still have the flavored tobacco ban on, on the table. It's contentious, and I can't even tell you where I stand on it, but I know that our kids shouldn't be doing it. I know my kids shouldn't have been doing it. They did it. But, um, so, but that could, we're trying to, to target it. What was the youth? You know, because adults who want to smoke should be able to smoke. It's fine. Mm -hmm. We all have our days. But um, 
there's talk of wrapping that into a safety brand as, as well as far as monitors in the bathroom that can detect that kind of um, chemicals. But I mean, kids are smart. They're just going to shove it up their sleeve. I mean, honestly. Um, but okay, so let's look at Grant guidance counselors. What's the situation? I I think the situation for us and our struggles are with like Sweetser. Yep. Um, we have. Um, Schools that are not covered by suites are right now the case, you know, the um, social worker has left and they haven't been able to fill that. So we have students in this, so not the whole district, correct? Just some of our schools. Um, so we utilize suites for folks that don't know. We utilize suites are um, services outside of our own social workers. So we do have a few district social workers, but we also utilize suites are and spur wink services to provide extra supports um, for students that re that can benefit from it. Um, but it is spurring and sweets are both are having difficulty hiring and being able to provide um, school based counselors. Do you use those those um, positions for specific student needs? Is it targeted or is it just uh, how does it come up? Like, how do you decide which ones will be delegated? So it's to typically not students who are like identified through special education. They're typically regular ed students who are just struggling um, and are usually referred through the guidance department and then they talk with parents about if you're interested we can do a school-based session which means that they can meet with the kiddos during the school day versus having parents have to figure out the appointments and stuff in the afternoon so sweet sir is that like outside All, counseling it's done outside counseling and we just provide space Okay. So it's outside counseling done in school. Exactly. Yes. Got yep. It. Yep. So the parents would be notified of that. Oh, of course. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. They have to. They have, they have to, to bill insurance. Yeah. It's all signed care. up and all yes. that kind of stuff. Yeah. Yep. So you guys are doing the billing. Yes. Yeah. yeah. We don't do the billing. So we are, the, This is. Yeah. yeah. I think the other thing that for us that is paramount is um, pre-K. Yeah. Um, there was some funding for pre-K. We've been really tight with space. So we weren't able to take some of those initial um, grants to help with pre-K. And also some of those initial grants ne didn't necessarily cover our teacher cost. So, and that's the big, you know, that's one of the bigger expenses of that. So as we continue to look at pre-K, we absolutely have a 100% need for pre-K. Um, we just are grappling with the space and the lack. We... We have nothing, so we are looking at, you know, like half and a full. Uh, we're looking at bringing our um, child development services, our, our youngest students in over time. They, you know, with CDS changing, we need to do that. Um, so just the grants to help support and kick off preschool programs. And I know that's in the works too, and I, and I understand the significance for that. I served on a, a board for a, a preschool and child care center. It, right as CVS was starting to make that change, that's when we started moving the older kiddos over to York so that they were, you know, right. Um, that was their right charge. But so I, I understand that money's going to be an issue this 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 go around. We're trying to, yeah. But that is, it's on the radar. We check out what needs to happen. Right. I'd like to see it on a larger scale, but. Um, um, Yeah. yeah. Um, just some concerns that as, as people um, wanted me to get on the board, um, one of the one of the things that's come up a lot is uh, the school and parent partnership. Um, there seems to be a breakdown in the partnership between parents and schools. Um, so uh, I'd be concerned just generally about um, em empowering school without empowering parents. And, uh, and I'm concerned that some of the legislation seems to be saying, no, we're not going to empower parents to be parents who are the ones who decided to have the children in the first place. You know, I, I'm concerned about just the constant state school district, right, making decisions and, and saying, hey, you know, this is the way you got to do it because this is the right way. Uh, I'm just not convinced that our country was founded that way. Um, there's a lot of different people that had a lot of different personalities and ideas about how things should run. And, uh, you know, COVID is a really good example of the most recent, probably the biggest blunder. And we as a, honestly, a, um, a government institution, we've not apologized for the wrong we did kids um, during that time. There's a lot of information out to say that there was a lot of mistakes done and we've not apologized. Um, and I think that for a lot of parents, boy, it'd be nice to do that. 
um, from our school district and our, and our legislators and just understand what we did wrong and admitting we did the best we could maybe i don't know i think that's up for debate um but there's definitely a breakdown in uh school and parent partnership when it comes to kids um so i don't know what we can do legislatively about that but that's a really important thing for me um another one would be um I'd, sorry yeah point back up absolutely you, that i hear some strong feelings absolutely i want to respect that but i i, I want to be able to draw a clearer line between your concerns and kind of what we're going up into into the second session and what specifically the kind of Thank ask you. is there yeah, I, I mean, there's a lot of feelings in this room. I, I absolutely, I can feel them, but absolutely actionable items and Fair. common sense. I like to work together with people, so that's that's yeah. There, I, I like the fact that people brought some some passion and and that they're angry. that's okay. I I actually I I want the dialogue out there, right? When when we're saying we can't talk about things, you know, some things might be really painful to hear, right? But we we should we should be able to talk about it. Right? We should be able to have those different opinions and, and be able to have those open air conversations. And, and I think that's OK. Right. I mean, in the end, those conversations need to happen so that hopefully by the end we get to a place where we go. All right. We're all a little uncomfortable, but we know we've talked about all these things. Right. Um, so it was one of those things where I'm, I'm not really sure. Actionable. I, I appreciate you asking that because I don't know what, exactly what step you can take, but it, but you are in a position of of leadership and certainly of influence within within our region, um, and I think just the, the the fact that you're here and that you, that you sent out this email, I think is fantastic, um, and I and I applaud that. But saying that you know we we really need like schools and parents, we need to work together. To me, I mean behaviors. We talked about. I, I heard people talk about behaviors in schools. That's a parent issue. That's happening in our schools. That's really how I feel, right? If we as a community of parents said we are not going to tolerate our kids behaving like this and in our schools as a, as a community of schools, we said, yeah, we are not going to tolerate this. And we got really strong and really direct with our, with our kids, right? As parents and as a school district, I do believe we could change this, right? But but we, we need everyone to be on the same page, be willing to have those tough conversations. So I, again, I don't know exactly what action, except for, for being being willing to talk about it. Yeah. I, I'm hearing that you don't feel heard. So what I can say to you is that your senator, Senator Rafferty, mm -hmm. is chair of the Education Committee. Fantastic. And I would like, it seems like there, there needs to be some more conversation. So if I can email you, if you have a card with you. Oh, that'd be wonderful. Me, let's set something up. You and I, Senator Rafferty, can kind of sit down and, and, and figure out because it really, Love I'm getting that you're not feeling heard. And, and Oh, no, I, I feel heard. Oh, I feel heard. I do. I No, I, that's, not, that's not a problem. Um, I do feel heard. You know, Hearing and, and action take time, and I know that. Um, so let's talk about an action one. I'm really concerned about the tech use for our kids. Um, you know, we the, from and I think and please, if I'm misallocating this, please tell me. Um, there's been a lot of push from the state to uh, put technology grants, getting more computers in the hands of kids. Um, I don't believe that that's always been the best thing. Um, obviously, I'm not talking about high school. I think high school technology makes sense. The kids are old enough, you know. Certainly, um, I'm concerned about anything under the age of 13. Um, and, and, you know, it's a, it's a parent and a school issue. Um, so I am concerned about the amount of tech time that kids spend on screens. COVID increased that dramatically, and we've not come down from it. Um, and it has huge uh, impacts. I mean, a study from the NIH is, is saying more screen time is more anxiety and more depression. And for the first time in decades, we, have, we don't have enough child psychologists for kids to see because there's so much anxiety and depression. And we're blaming that we don't have enough child psychologists. It's not getting to the root cause of the problem. I'd like to see us actually acknowledge that we have an issue with technology and screens. So are we looking at in the schools and the high schools? Are there, are there cell phone drops in classrooms? Are you guys doing that yet? I think Marfoot is. I know that's a good step. It, it really cuts down. And just that if you break that connection for an mm -hmm. hour with a kiddo and a device in front of them, mm -hmm. you break it for longer. So, uh, but on the flip side, I can tell you that, you know, I've been through a couple of virtual conferences and AI is also here and it's not going away. So these are what kids are going to be using for their college essays and their term papers. And now we have to look and shift towards it's here. It's open source. It, it's not going anywhere. How do we, for me, I'm saying how as a state to provide guidance as to how to teach them how to use it appropriately mm -hmm. and as a tool, not as a crutch. So it, it's a double-edged sword. Mm -hmm. It's, I have three children in a four-year range. They're all in high school at the same time. Last one during the pandemic. So I understand. 
Okay. Yeah. And, and, and with the, the mental health, you know, it was a guidance counselor that got my kid to graduate. Otherwise, he wasn't. I mean, <laughs> open a computer to go to school. No, thank you. Mm -hmm. I want to go see my friends. Yeah. So, I mean, there's a lot of, there's a lot of give and take everywhere, but it's a rounder conversation mm -hmm. um, that we absolutely could have more in depth. I want to make sure that I give space to everyone here. Mm -hmm. And it sounds like you've made yourself available to all of us, and we definitely appreciate that. I see a lot of faces I know around here, and y'all know, just text me, call me, show up at my house, whatever it is. <laughs> I mean, not if I'm sleeping, but... <laughs> <laughs> uh. I have a, I have a couple questions. We had a um, someone mention a hold on. Let me put my glasses on. I can't look at you. I'm sorry. And do read at the same time. Um, I'm adjusting to a contact. Uh, okay, so same difference. Yeah. Um, the U.S. News and World Report um, said that Noble was ranked uh, 47th out of 111 schools. Um, that puts us around the average. Um, the statistics at Noble High School, 94% of the students. What's the date on that? Oh, uh, you know what? It was recent. It was, it was very recent. I'm, a month ago. We don't have, I don't have it in front of me. I'm sorry. I apologize. Science, well, they're 56%. Reading, 54%. And mathematics, 34%. What was the reading number? Uh, 54. Well, it's good, but it's not great. It's not really what we should be shooting for. <laughs> I mean, there's more. <laughs> right. Oh, I, I totally understand that. And that's a tragedy as well. But I just wonder, as a legislator and education, what are we looking at to try to, and I understand that there's the Department of Education, but we've got to do some work here. Everybody knows it. I mean, we need to educate these children and what they need to be productive members of society. And I know teachers are doing the best that they can. But um, is there a notion of possibly getting back to education and the children's emotional thing taking that back seat instead of the opposite? Um, I've heard um, from the head of the department in Maine, and I don't know the name, but that they said that the emotional well-being of a child is going to take oh, precedence sorry. over the Department of Ed. Oh, Commissioner Macon? Um, possibly, like I said, I'm not sure of the name, um, but that they said that they're going to put the emotional well-being of the children ahead of the academics. Um, Was this a conversation you had with? The nope, it's been it's a public statement. Okay. You said in the hearing. And as a legislator, I, I, I would just like to know uh, what can what can you guys do or put forward to kind of help these kids so that education becomes first and the social well-being like we said we're, we're we're short on counselors short on teachers what's going to come first you know what's going to be the impact there of again that? this is one of those when you pick at a string you know, and you pull it, and then you're going to realize we don't have the mental health professionals overall in this state. Because the who's shorted. Mm -hmm. So it is falling to the schools by default because that's where the structure is in place, right? Because I know, you know, I myself, I'm not qualified to counsel my children who had, you know, behavioral and, you know, ADHD type problems. Um, at that time, there were more mental health resources. So you start pulling at this, and then you get at the teacher shortage, and then you get to the point where your ed techs are now your teachers at your base level, and they're just at your bachelor's levels, where, you know, five, six, seven years ago, you had higher up teachers. So, I mean, it's, again, this is a very big discussion to have, and I'm happy to have it, too. It's what, what I'm from Lebanon. Lebanon. Okay. I know that educating our children is is our priority. Yes, that's cool. Just like there's emotions in this room, there are a lot of emotions in Augusta, and there are a lot of things that make headlines, and there are a lot of things that get misconstrued or get... But go sit in the classroom for a day and watch the kids learn. You know, ask them, you know, what, what they learned today. It's... The rhetoric that you hear from anywhere in the ethos is not always what's exactly happening. Go to the public hearings. Actually see, and just because you see a public hearing where people show up on each side, 
I have to see what happens to that bill in the end. Does it get amended? The concerns get listened to. So a lot of people see a bill text and they see the title and everybody's fired up. And that bill either dies or it gets amended to hear concerns. So it's, I would just caution, okay? I. It, it is becoming harder and harder for people to kind of work together and everybody to hear each other. And, and, and to assume that either, you know, perspectives don't have X, Y, or Z um, as a priority, I don't think is fair without having a conversation. I don't know the context of Commissioner Megan's comment. I will certainly look into it and, and mm -hmm. have it absolutely, because I'd like to know. Because I don't think that that overall, that value statement reflects the legislature as a whole. I don't think it reflects our teachers and, and our administrators. I don't think it reflects that. But so that's where I caution the taking the sound bite and making it a whole talking point. But it's not it's not helpful to the work you do. I'm sure that these little things are hindering functioning, you know, as a board. But, but I but I do think there is a um, we can see the steps going that way in some places in the schools and 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 elsewhere. And I just, I just truly, I wanna back up on his too. Part of that is to almost exclude parents. And I don't wanna see that happen because parents are the first teachers of the children. And that is such a big priority. There's so many different <laughs> views out there. There's so many different, let me use the word religions or whatever that is, that those parents are teaching those kids. And we have to be open to that for everyone. And sometimes the steps that are being taken to protect one class excludes another class from any protections at all. I, and so I just I you know some some context. Yes, exactly. absolutely. So I'm yeah. hearing kind of just like well, I'm trying to be broad for a reason, <laughs> but the, yeah, the point is, I, yeah. Can, I'll keep my card and you can feel absolutely. I'd love to have a conversation with you. Absolutely. And is that that the thing too? Yes, because I tagged them in here. <laughs> <laughs> to you too. <laughs> no, I, I know. I'm just, I'm just here. <laughs> and thank you. We appreciate all that you appreciate you being here. Absolutely. Yes, what? Oh, I just have one thing. I had heard. I can't see your name. I'm sorry. Travis Dwyer. I had heard that Governor Mills had recently said that we have a large surplus of money, like over seven hundred million dollars. Um, my hope is as legislators and senators that you are going to look at the first thing money to help burden the tax base, uh, whether that is increasing the percentage of the schools to help us with our increase or to help in, you know, offset some of our increases that we're going to have to offset some of the town's increases. I fully hear you. Um, Focus. Okay. It, that makes sense. That, and that's where I'm in with that, right? Like the if we have that much of a surplus, we need to look at trying to help the schools who are struggling to get our budgets passed at a very low increase. You know, help give some of that money back towards us. And the biggest way that I can think of doing that off the top head is stop with the unfunded mandates. The unfunded mandates cripple school districts. Okay. I mean, I can tell you there is a commitment to stay at the 55% funding rate that we have not been at mm -hmm. since it was voted in by the people mm -hmm. and the same on the town level. Like, so there's commitment there. We're keeping that. We're keeping free lunch. It. We have money set aside. A surplus is there. Yes. I don't get to decide what to do with it. Bob does it. Jeff does it. There's an appropriations committee. The governor has a change package. There are bills that go. I mean, it's a whole. It's there's no like, hey, I want to do this. There's but you're really you're a part of that process. You can be a part of that process. Right. right. That's that's what I'm asking you guys. To to help be, us. There has to be be a part of that process. Right. So there has to be a uh, an actionable piece of legislation in order to do that. That very specifically outlines how the money is to be dispersed. To whom the formula is, how much what your total is. It's not just give money to taxes. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to let uh, Tom talk about taxes if that's what you want to talk about. Right. Oh. <laughs> 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 if no one has anything else, I will absolutely hand it off to Tom on the tax. We would love to hear from. Okay. 
Any of you, the three I'll, of you. I'll stick around for a little while. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And Jeff, I want to say Augusta is very contentious. I'm not going. I'm going to go <laughs> we have a really unique relationship that we don't care who's Republican or Democrat. We're just trying to make our community better. So, and you're way smarter than I am, but <laughs> I, I serve on the joint. Madam Chair, I think there was one more question. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. sorry. I did I, it. I hadn't. Um, it went back to Switzer hmm? um, yeah. with. With Are you really? I, I'm sorry. No, I I, I, I think it can be answered here. Okay. Um, but with Sweetser, you said so. Be you guys are we're just providing space. The space, right? Nothing else. Correct. So the funding for the counseling comes through. Funding is from the parents. Either they pay, so their insurance pays. Right, it's through the main care. Program. Okay. Yeah. okay. Thanks. Okay, that was it. Thank you. So anyway, I'm Tom Levine. I'm the state rep for for work in parts of it. And my kids went all the way through the set 60 uh, district. Uh, Peg and I were on the board of selectmen. We're on development committees. Uh, her more than I, she's a warrior in that sense. Uh, but we have taken on some huge community issues. And we've learned that we can be effective. But I just want to stress to you guys that Augusta's a funny place. Um, <laughs> You don't get what you want out of Augusta. It's it's a it's a big room. Um, it it can be uh, steeped in emotion uh, like we were earlier, but everybody gets heard. Uh, but majority wins, so you get to speak a lot of times, and then that, that's really your only uh, opportunity to address an issue. But I I, I just want to stress it. I don't want to go over all. The pieces that she did uh it's really unique what we have here uh the three of us and senator rafferty uh you know, with his long history in, in the we more than care uh but to tiffany's point we're we're in a the the second part of the legis uh legislative session uh, we were just talking about it earlier that only emergency bills are heard. We can't really bring any new new stuff to Augusta in this session. So uh, we we adjourned, uh, I want to say with 300 and bills that were put uh, forward to this session. Yeah. Overall, we had 2,500. And I will tell you, uh, serving on uh, the taxation committee, <laughs> not entertaining whatsoever. It's a lot of math. Uh, everybody wants to get rid of the sales tax. Everybody wants to get rid of the income tax. And I want to tell you that probably 60% of the things that we've heard are based on those two things. You know, it goes off into uh, the weeds a little bit where. Uh, you know, uh, sales tax on prescriptions, you know, does that carry over in the veterinary? I think it should. Um, there's a lot of talk about weed up in Augusta. More than we really ever want to talk about. Uh, but we did some effective things. I think we, we, uh, we quoted uh, Taking some of, of the sales tax, a percentage, twelve percent, I think it was, uh, to go to uh, recovery centers. You know, there, there's a dotted line there. Uh, you know, I'm sure nobody's ever died from smoking weed, but there is a dotted line. It, it can, if, if you have, you know, a, addictive personalities, you may want to increase whatever makes you feel good. So that's how you get there. But um, the majority of taxation is people proposing the elimination of income tax and the elimination of sales tax. And everybody always brings up New Hampshire. And I probably have said it 20 times. It's, you know, it costs you $12 to get your car inspected in Maine. It costs you 85 in New Hampshire. They're just pulling out of a different pocket. 
it's the math is the same. All the states, you know, they basically cost the same amount to rent. So that property tax goes to the state of the Right. And so we're working, uh, you know, there was a the uh, senior property tax thing. It wasn't sustainable. Uh, the first year, the expense to the state was three million. The second year was twenty-four million, and then it went to seventy-five. We had to stop the bleeding. It, it, it was a bad program. Great for the seniors, and the seniors loved it. I am currently a senior, and I was in the room when we made the program go away. It made me a little sad. It was the only good thing about turning sixty-five, actually. Uh, but we're working on other elements that are sustainable and are meaningful. And as Tiffany stated, uh, Jonathan, is it, we're in a place in this session where if something is actionable, we will absolutely group together. Uh, but all the talking, the speeches, that was last session. And uh, it went on till three or four, seven in the morning sometimes. I wondered why I ran quite a few times, actually. Uh, wondered who was going to let my dog. Out. But, uh, you know, we're getting there. And I just think that we're in a special place where we all have grown up around here, basically. We can help, but we're, we're also limited. Sometimes we just get to stand up and talk. And then when you're done, you're waiting for an answer. But everybody just moves on to the next issue. Like, I think I did my job today. So it's a tough place to be, but you are in a great spot. Better than I've seen around the state. You know, there's there's far too much energy spent on who's a Democrat, who's a Republican. Uh, you know, we, we have the luxury of more often than not of meeting in the middle, which is where the effective place is. So... Uh, taxation, it's not exciting. We're, 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 it's a myriad of issues. It's uh, lobstermen, uh, they, they want an exclusion on uh, the sales tax for their boats. But it's already in the program. It's just at the end, just like we all do our taxes. You know, it's just a, so there, there's a lot of energy spent on these uh, uh, exclusions, farm, uh, Timber, those industries. Uh, Excuse me. I actually feel the worst for the farmers when I'm sitting up in Augusta because uh, it, in a swipe of a pen, the next day, you know, a, a farm that's been in a family for centuries, they just auctioned off 700 head of cattle and they're selling their land to a developer. So it's it may feel like there's a lot of, uh, enough people in Augusta to take care of all the issues, but it is overwhelming. It's just absolutely exhausting. But we retreat back to our towns, and that's where we can be effective. And we're all very reachable. Uh, so let us help you, but please make it something we can do so we're not frustrating you. We have little this session. All right, I was wrong. <laughs> You're talking to the veteran. Yeah, I know. She, she, she had a little more time. There's always a way to do something. <laughs> there is. There is. We stand up, we stamp our feet. And, but uh, what committee are you on? Big local. That's the other one. That's the committee. That's the committee. That's what it's called. Like the school. A lot of stuff comes up through us. Oh, anything from salaries to. So, if you have any questions, I'll try to answer them. Kind of a new guy in in a sense. Uh, it was it was uh, very eye opening this last session. Uh, Thank you. Any questions? Anything else? No. Do you want to? Yeah. I'm curious what state and local is. <laughs> My friend of Adams, I know a lot of you guys, and a lot of you guys, and uh, all there in Noble. 
president of the football league here. I coached football over here for years, baseball, everything. So a lot of years I know, um, known over many years. Um, this is my first term as representative. Um, I'm out of acting in Lebanon. Um, I was put on state and local this year. Uh, so state and local handles a lot of just what it says, state and local issues. Uh, a lot of stuff we see is like CBA type stuff. Um, we do see salaries, positions. Now they're talking about the money. Um, one of the things that came before our committee, which I was adamantly against, they wanted to add a bunch of new positions to the budget, but they had they only have about like 40% capacity of ones they already have. So but what happens with that money if they don't fill those positions or pulls back to the general? That money, in my opinion, could be spent uh, a little better um, for a private community. I mean, honestly, you know, if you come down this way. So, that, you know, that was the main uh, focus on uh, our committee was, you know, just state and local issues. Uh, Representative Levine and Roberts are correct. Um, we're, we're in a lot better shape than a lot of places up there. We don't have a lot of the same problems. Uh, we do see several. Uh, we're talking about the education bill. Um, about what Macon said, Macon did say that they were going to do uh, put an emphasis on AEI, and uh, I did put a bill in. I was actually the freshman representative that put in over twenty bills, all mostly consistent with bills. So uh, eighteen got through that they got heard. Many were um, education bills, um, and you know, so that's what you know. They were talking. About. One of my bills were the focus on academics versus yeah. And I think that's very important. Uh, we see that uh, just based on the numbers we see up here. Um, but um, that was one of the main things. Uh, Joe Rafferty, Senator Rafferty, is on uh, the Education Committee, is the chairman for that. Uh, I went before his board, I think, four separate, five separate times. I uh, didn't get a single bill out of committee. Uh, but the ideas are out there. There's a lot of, like uh, Representative Levine was saying, there's a lot of two steps. <laughs> I personally think, and this is my opinion, and everybody's got one. Um, I think parents should be ultimately involved in every decision that they have. Period. Because um, that's just, that's just the way I feel about it. Um, and uh, so you know, we got a lot of those are our carryovers coming up this year. Um, I think the focus is going to be on. Um, I mean, as much as I hate to say, with what just recently happened, I think it's going to be a lot of gun control focused stuff that's going to pop up. Um, and I think, uh, like the good representative Robert said, we, we need to focus on health facilities. We close a lot of them in the state. We don't have them. It causes a lot of problems. And of course, with the shop mandate, we lost a lot of caretakers as well. Um, hopefully that gets reversed so we can actually get some people back. But I am very available. I am on the uh, state house page. I have a separate Facebook page. Many's get hold of me. I will return a phone call to anybody anytime. Um, and uh, if you got any questions for me, I'm more than happy to answer them. Yep, no question, no. Oh, I, no, sorry. And, and thank you, I'm, I'm glad that you are all making yourself accessible, we appreciate it. Yeah. I'm the new guy, like I said, I was told to get with the program, I said my program's active in Lebanon, that's where we live. <laughs> thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. Uh, Next on the agenda is financial summary. Denise is locking up. Yep. Thank you. Access work. Check them out there. Oh, okay. oh I've got it. Good evening. We will have a copy of the financial summary through November 23. Um, I am again, things are, are progressing as expected. I don't have any uh, particular concerns that have arisen other than the ones I've mentioned previously. Um, we have spent approximately two thirds of our athletic. Transportation budget. A lot of that is due to private charter buses we need because we don't have enough drivers to transport. Um, and 
let's see, last year at this time, we had about 14% of the budget revenues to this year's 12%, but it's tracking pretty much along. So I don't know if you have any questions. You feel good. We feel good usually. <laughs> if you say, it, but no, the figures are, like you said, they're running pretty true to what they've done most years. Um, yes, and you know, there are always some things that are higher and lower, but uh, when you take that higher level look, we're looking for being on target. Have you heard anything further about CMP and the raising rate? No, and I don't know. We um, we all heard that the residential rates were taking a big, a significant uh, decrease starting in January. We haven't heard the same about commercial accounts, um, but I'm hoping that it's just the next step that will follow. But uh, we also have had a very warm winter so far, so we'll see as the temperatures are getting colder. We'll see how that electric. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks. Employment. Okay, so we have two employment um, documents that both both of them. First one is Lauren Jones, and Lauren is requesting leave of short term leave of absence after. Um, the birth of her child so she's going to go out on maternity leave similar to the one we had um the last meeting and she wants to extend that out um so it she is an occupational therapist she's working in north berwick let me see knowlton school in the middle school and so we do have coverage for her during that time and if she extends that time if you grant that leave of absence we have coverage for her i'm actually able to prove okay second all in favor? Okay, the next one is um, Glenn Hogue. Glenn is currently a teacher at MHA, and Glenn has been um, given a different opportunity that he'd like to explore, so he is resigning from his position. He's been in the district for how long, would you say? Oh, five years. Five, yeah, mm -hmm. yep. Um, so we just need a motion. Motion to approve. Thank you. I'll second. Okay. All in favor? Superintendent update. Okay, a couple updates. First of all, just for those in the um, audience that came up and just talked about, um, you know, like metal detectors and other things that we're doing, we always are exploring different ways that we can keep, you know, our students as safe as we possibly can. So we're heading into our budget season. We're looking, you know, at all of those areas that we can um you know to to get guidance in and information and for best practices and what's the safest so i just wanted to to just put that on everybody's radar that that's certainly you know something we're we're considering to do you know to look at that, those pieces um so that's the, just the first the first part of that um a couple other updates that i i wanted to give um first of all i wanted to just publicly acknowledge our high school staff and our high school administrators uh, for doing such a very, very um, thorough, stellar job, and um, and our students. Mm -hmm. So that's that piece. Can I ask a quick question for sure. the um, metal detectors? Yes. Are we considering um, just the high school, or are we considering some of the other schools as well? Because if you have an intruder, a detector might be good on any school. Yeah, I'm wondering if that's something that's also in, in the consideration. So in general terms, when we look at safety, we look at everything across the district. So yeah, good, yeah. Uh, just a quick update, as we were taking tours of all the buildings earlier this year, there were some classrooms that some of you noted that didn't have um, flags up. Um, so the flags have been um, placed in all the classrooms. Um, let's see. And then just a quick update on our Excel position that we had open. We had a parent come in last meeting and just ask that we have a speedy uh, time frame for that. So we do have somebody who was hi hired as a long-term sub and um, is working with the transition with Eileen Sahagian. And um, that will take effect right when we get back from break. And because it's a long-term sub position, it will be re-advertised in the spring. So those are superintendent updates. Okay. Other? I have one. Um, can we, uh, as a district, 
I see that we have been lacking on our flag etiquette in front of our buildings. More frequently than not, I find the flag at half staff when it should be at full staff or at full staff when it should be at half staff. There are sites available. There are. The American <laughs> flag is one that we should be following and whoever that person needs to be at each school should be following is currently the high school flag is at half staff and it's supposed to be at full staff because that was to my knowledge only supposed to be at half staff for Tuesday. Any other other? Just a question about um, a student representative. Oh, good uh, question. Still working on the student representative. Okay. Yeah. Katie's working on it. Mm -hmm. And I do have another, and I start with an apology. Typically, when I get a request from board members for things to be brought up, um, I when I email or forward that email to uh, Sue and Audra, I typically CC you guys, and I did not. So there were some areas that he uh, that Josh was requesting uh, data for, like NWA, uh, it matching with the Common Core. Um, I can, I will. CC that to you, forward that to you, but it is on their radar at, and uh, Audra and Sue are aware. So I apologize for not CCing you. I sometimes forget that. Sorry. <laughs> get all kinds of emails. <laughs> yeah. So uh, public input. I have I have just a couple. Oh, sorry, other. I'm sorry to ask some questions on. Um, we had a math team meet. How did you do? Do you know? A math team. Yeah. Math. It was on the agenda for the um, what was coming up, the events. And on 12-14, I said it was a math meet, and I was just wondering. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Sorry. Okay, and how about the Hussein and Knowlton movie night? Oh, that was great. Yeah. Good? Okay. That was awesome. And then we had the Winter Coral, Co Win uh, I didn't say that right. Winter Coral Concert for 8 through 12. We, yes, we've had a lot of concerts, and we continue to have a lot of concerts. So they're all some coming up, or there are there are some. One There's more tomorrow. tomorrow. Yeah, at school is, during the yes. school day. Which school is that? Yes. North Probably Berwick. North Park Elementary. Mm -hmm. North Park Elementary. Thank you. Other. So can I respond? I believe so. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yep. Okay. So I realize that there were people that got upset at my comments. And Sheriff? Mm -hmm. yes. Sheriff. Sheriff King, yep. Got up and shined a spotlight, spotlight on Lebanon and expressed how absolutely isolated we are and vulnerable. And everything he said, number one, should not have been on video. It, or he should have chosen in his words better than he did. But to say that we are, that's just like spy, shining a spotlight. Maybe nobody ever sees the video. Maybe a lot of people see the video. Obviously, some people saw the video because you're here tonight. You can be mad at me all you want to. I am going to defend my town. Any other? Other? Public input. Can I can I just ask a question about that? What did Sheriff King say that he shouldn't have said? That uh, it was response time. Um, that the elementary schools are absolutely isolated and vulnerable. He could have he could have put that more diplomatically, because it, it just sounds like there's like nobody around and there's never going to be. You know, we don't we don't know. When somebody is going to go half cocked, we don't, and nobody knows how I feel about an SRO or not. I was trying to get to the bottom of the questions when I was asking him prices and stuff, but it, it was it, it raised my hackles as soon as he said it. It was like, do you want to put a neon light on the schools or or what? Because it was that's exactly how it hit me. I graduated. What did I bring in tonight? My yearbook from Columbine High School. I graduated from Columbine High School. So I'm a little bit sensitive about those kinds of things. And, and, and he used that as an example. There's been plenty of shootings, Connecticut, 
any of them, it doesn't always have to go back to Columbine. So that's my comments. Public input? If the time needs to. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was at the uh, school board meeting when Jerry mentioned uh, things that she said. I, I didn't, I took it as she was giving examples or just things that we could be looking at. For instance, um, there are officers in school shootings that cower, they hid. We should look at veterans. Uh, they're highly skilled and you should be looking more than one. If you got a West Wing, you got a right wing, and something happens in the West, but they're over on the right, you ain't gonna get there in time. Um, I, I and I think what she's saying about saying that said they're vulnerable, you never show your weakness because you're inviting problems. That's a military tactic. That's something you should all know. That's inviting problems with your own home. I like Travis what you said about uh, budget, uh, 165 million. Um, bring it to um, uh, back to the taxpayers, helping school out. I think that was a really good comment. I like the fact that you mentioned the flag. Thank you very much for that. Um, I, I think what um, somebody here said about social emotional learning, Victoria was absolutely right. I heard that. Mm -hmm. Janet Mills announced the new uh, person charged in charge of our education system. That she or she said um, that. Um, it was going to take precedence over uh, our regular curriculums. I think that's wrong, and it's going in the wrong direction. And we saw that with UPenn. We saw that with Harvard. We kill the Jews from the river to the sea. Is that what we're teaching in school? Look at some of the books you have in here. Critical race theory. Okay, we need to get back to math, science. Education, you know, it's not your job to teach these kids what, uh, you know, what, uh, are they supposed to be girl or boy? That's the parents. You shouldn't even be involved in that. That's opening Pandora's box. And we're seeing that in, in, in all over the world right now. We're in chaos. As far as budgets, you should be looking at your budgets because Goldman and Sachs, they realize they have unrealized um, losses, six hundred fifty billion dollars. Out of fact, they're in such sad shape. They sold off eight hundred million ounces, uh, leased off eight hundred million ounces of silver. In March, silver was at thirty dollars an ounce. It's now down to twenty-two. Now, what did that do for Goldman Sachs? For every one dollar that ounce goes up, they have to pay eight hundred million dollars. Fifteen seconds. How do Recover from this. The banks are going to fail. Life as you know it's going to change very radical here because of the agenda we're pushing. Government's too big. We need to set it down. And, and thank you. That is your three minutes, sir. Thank, thank you. you. Public input? You can speak twice. Mm -hmm. Really? <laughs> Everything that the sheriff said was appropriate and already public knowledge. And I also would argue that what you said at that meeting also shined a bright spotlight on Lebanon that some may not have known how well and heavily armed they are, which also made people more concerned than they would. But now that we know how heavily armed Lebanon is and secluded, um, and all of the high call volume, that's more opportunity for someone with a mental illness or whatever the case may be, putting a gun in their backpack and bringing it into this. Again, I just want to reiterate, I hope we seriously look at metal detectors. I appreciate your comments because now I know. And the sheriff's comments were already public knowledge and totally appropriate. Anyone else wish to speak? Oh. 
I just want to back up with School Board Member Basco said. I was here in person at the December 7th meeting. Um, it was not about getting a militia. Um, if anybody knows more, they can talk to her. I've spoke to her one-on-one. -on -one. It was a concerned citizens group, whether it be fathers, grandfathers, just like the people in this room tonight. It's concerned citizens. Parents that would want to go there, families that want to go there to help protect. Even if we have an SRO officer, that's one person in that whole building. That person's going to need help. And at that last meeting, there was discussion. It could still take 15 to 20 minutes for your county sheriffs to get there. That SRO officer is going to need help before then. So we can be here now. Let those families be there to help them. With that being said, I'll move on. Two other quick things. I know usually this is for input, not questions. Um, you can get back to me on this later. Normally, there's agendas passed out. I didn't get one tonight. I don't know if I should just get that online or if there's any available. They're really nice to have. My last thing is I'm um, getting back to conversation earlier. There was talk of ed 10 ed techs that were needed. I was curious as to how many of those ed techs that are needed currently are for positions that are not for behavioral health. How? Um, okay. Because I'm an ed tech in a BDP mm -hmm. and I've been watching. And most of what I see out there and in surrounding school districts are all for BHP positions. I'm seeing it very well for academic ed techs. Other input? Oh, yeah, actually. If, if there's no more public input, uh, we need to, uh, our next item agenda is executive session, one MRSA 40560, labor contract negotiation. So we make, make, a, make a motion to adjourn. Uh, well, we, well, 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 motion to adjourn. We're going to say that decision. no more public session will occur. And then after our um, executive session, we will be shutting down the. Come back to it. Yeah. Okay. And the yeah. And he's